In our last video, we talked about using textures in our paintings. Today, you will get to use those techniques in a painting of your own. It's the same old story being told inside my head. I'm too shy to Hi everyone, I'm Elisa. I'm the artist behind Elisa Laporte Art. And today, we are going to paint a picture together using the techniques we learned in our last video of creating textures. Now we got to use a bunch of different techniques to create textures and today you will see how to use those in an actual painting for different purposes. And that can be a little difficult to determine depending on what you are wanting to accomplish. Are you doing a floral? Are you doing a landscape? Are you doing a portrait? All of these things will play into what techniques we would use for our painting. If you like this one and other tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out. Now let's get to it. I decided to do a bird's eye view of the ocean and the beach. I thought it would be a fun, different perspective, but it'll give us a lot of different textures that we can play around with and use. I'm just sketching out my water line where the ocean is coming up to the beach. And then we have some things in the sand over here. We're gonna have some people kind of on the beach over here and in the ocean. I'm gonna put some umbrellas here. Put a shadow over here and some more people. Maybe a few over here. Okay, so now we need to prepare our paper. And what I mean by that is here along the water's edge, as the water comes up, it creates a, a foam, a sea foam, and it's white. So we're going to use the technique we had here where we add masking fluid to create a texture for that sea foam and we'll be able to paint over top of it. So we have our masking fluid. For the sea foam today I'm going to use my liner pen and I'm just going to create little lines and dots not following anything specific just kind of where I think it would be more white and kind of creating a motion like the water is going back and forth. It'll leave a little bit of gap holes in there where you're going to be able to see the sand. We'll be able to create a little bit more texture in that once we are done painting and then we take off the masking fluid then we'll be able to create the shadows and the texture within our water, our sea foam. And I'm all going to go ahead and cover this umbrella because I'm going to paint all the sand and I don't want to worry about going around that. I'm also going to mask out some of these people so I don't lose them. Now while this is finishing drying I will explain to you a little bit of what I had in mind. So. This side is the water and this side is the beach. And I kind of want this effect right here. So we kind of have like the water and the beach. So we might use some salt in the beach. And then I will use backgrounds and blossoms a little bit in the ocean. Uh, maybe a little bit on the beach right here. And then the other thing I wanted to use for the water is the saran wrap. I really love this texture here which I think will go great for the different waves and movement um, on our ocean here. And we'll also be using a little bit of our splattering up in this area here to create some darker tones in our sand. I'm going to mix up a few of my colors here, get them wet, and prepare them so when this is dry I can start painting. We're going to need to be fairly quick 
with some of these techniques because it can we don't want too th many things to dry, we don't want to do too much and miss out on doing some of the techniques that we want to do. If you remember when we put the salt down we had to put it down fairly quickly after we did it. I mean you don't have to put it on and then try to have your salt in the other hand but you don't want to let your paint dry too much before you put your salt on. To do blossoms you want to let your paint sit just for a minute and then you are going to drop your water on so that you do create those blossoms because you want it to have dried somewhat so when you add more water it's going to push the paint away. If you add your water too soon right after you've applied your paint it'll just mix in with the paint and it won't create these blossoms that we want. And same here, you want to have, make sure your materials, your salt and your saran wrap and everything, it's ready to go. So when you put your paint on, you're going to be able to immediately, or when you need to, put your texture techniques on there. Because right after you've laid your wash in, you want to put your saran wrap on to get this effect. My saran wrap here it a little bit because I want it to make sure it fits all the way across here. For the ocean I'm going to use a phalo turquoise or a viridian green and ultramarine blue to create that ocean. It's a very green mix between an aqua and a blue. If you're not comfortable with using your brush to create blossoms you can also use a spray bottle if it's on a fine mist and you can just mist it just over the top. Just be careful you're not spraying it right at your painting or you're just gonna you'll ruin it. Yeah, it looks like my masking fluid is pretty dry so I'm gonna start here with the ocean. It looks like our masking fluid is dry so I'm gonna start here at the top always working from top to bottom and I'm going to work with our lightest color which will be kind of a Indian yellow or a quinacridone gold. We want to start out fairly light. It is the beach and we'll add some darker hints. You can even add just a touch of red to make it kind of an orangey color if you want. So I'm just going to go in, darken it up a little bit more on the sides here. I'm going to add just a touch of red. See, I didn't add much red, so it does look more golden, but it's not going to be like orange. And now down here, I want to lighten that up a little bit. And then I'm going to go back and darken it up with a little bit more of that orangey yellow. You can even maybe add just a touch of burnt sienna. And that's going to be where the water has touched the beach and so it's going to look darker here. And you want a little bit of that to go into your surf because you're going to be seeing through the water so you're going to see some of that sand come through there. And I'm going to use a little bit of water because I don't want it very dark and I'm going to add just a little bit of that here below into where our water would be. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to add some salt. I'm going to use our table salt, the finer salt for this. Not too much. While that is drying, I am now going to quickly go down to my water because this is still wet. So I want to add my lighter green. I'm going to add just a touch of sap green to it to brighten it a little bit more where it's closer to the shore. Not too much. I want it more like an emerald green. Okay, and then I'm going to go and darken that up and add a little bit of our darker blue as we go down. So it's almost blue blue as it gets deeper. I, I caught it while it was still wet so I was able to go back into it. And then I'm going to run a clean brush over the line of where my masking fluid was. Okay, here's where I'm going to first really quick maybe add just a few droplets of water to create blossoms and then I'm going to put my saran wrap and I'm going to put a weight on it. I'm going to put this on it, it's pretty heavy. And then you need to leave that on there until it is dry. 
can see a little bit of a blossom forming here. I like that. And you can see the sand starting to form. And we need to also let this dry all the way before we do any splattering or any detail work. So on this one, we'll have used our salt, we'll have used our masking fluid, spattering, saran wrap, and blossoms to create this painting. And you can get really creative with your textures. You, I've seen them done in paintings of animals and people. You can use them for the backgrounds, the foregrounds. It's a great technique to just really make your paintings pop. So we're letting this set. We put our saran wrap on it. We used green. We used a viridian green, a little bit of sap green, and some ultramarine blue to create our water. And then we just put a few droplets of water to create some blossoms. And then we put our saran wrap on it and we're letting it dry. And then we put salt on our sand so we can create a sand texture and the lights and darks of that sand. And now we are letting them dry before we start the next step. Now that the paint is dried, I'm going to take off my weight and we're going to take off our saran wrap. You see we have a fun design here. And because it's dry, I can actually layer some colors because I do want it to be a darker color here. And it's okay if we layer on top of this because it'll still show through, but it won't be so prominent. I'm just going to add some color. I want this to be a nice deep blue down here, like the ocean is. And I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more. I'm just going to add this viridian and then add a little bit of sap green to it to brighten it up. I don't want it everywhere because I want it to be light as well. And I'm going to take my paper towel and dab here a little bit. So you can still see some of that texture in there from the saran wrap. And I am going to add just a few and on this side, I think I'm going to darken the sides of my sand as well using our Indian yellow and burnt sienna. I want it to have kind of a reddish tone to it. I'm going to put it in some of these places and then I'm going to rinse my brush and soften it up. I like that better. Still want more. It's okay that it mixed in here. It just looks like it would in the in the water, the beach. It just you're gonna see some of that pull through there and blend. And I just we want that darker tone right here where it's been getting wet. This sand will be darker because of the water. These are all things you do need to think about when you're painting your subjects. You need to think about what things really happen around there and what you can do to make it look accurate. I think I do want to darken up. It's a nice, fun, glowy effect. I don't want too big of blossoms, but I want a few. I rinsed most of the water off with my paper towel and then I was still able to hit it against my finger so the drops aren't going to be as big. So I'm just going to get a few little spots here. Okay, our painting is dry again. So now we're, I'm going to take off this. I don't want to take off the masking fluid, but I want to take off the salt. There we go. So you can see a little bit of the salt and the effects that it left us. So here I do want to use some splattering because I want it to look like there's some um, dark weeds or grasses in this area or that the beach is just, you know, it's got some darker sand. So I'm going to do some splattering. Now, when you do splattering, you want to make sure you cover the areas of your painting that you do not want splattered on. So I'm going to put these papers here. So I don't want that to get any paint on it. And I'm going to go into my burnt sienna. Now, remember, you don't want this paint too thick because it'll clump up on your brush and you don't want it too thin because then it's not going to show up very well. 
I want the splatters to go this way, so that's why the brush is not facing this way. You want to make sure you're splattering in the same direction that you want your splatters to go. Okay. I'm going to do another darker color. This time we'll go into raw umber. And again, doing the same splatters. This one was too big, so I'm going to quickly pick that up with my paper towel. And I'm going to go in with my yellow as well with the burnt sienna. Have a darker yellow also splattered in there. Now for me, some of these are looking a little too big and I want them smaller. So I'm actually going to take my toothbrush. I have a toothbrush just for my painting. And I'm going to, my toothbrush in the paint, you're able to get smaller splatters, which will look more like sand. And I'm going to go into my other colors as well. I want the darker ones to be closer to the water where it's going to be darker. Okay, then we can take these off. As you can see, we have, we have our sand on here. And if you don't like some of those, they're too big, you can always try and lift them out a little bit. Okay, so we just took off our masking fluid and now we can work on the details. And I know it looks really white, but we are able to now work on the details and soften up this really, really white with tiny bits of our ocean color and tiny bits of our sand color to make it not so white. So I'm gonna take my number eight round and just go into my lighter aqua color, the ones closer here, and very watered down. It's just watered down some of yours so it's very light because we don't want it dark. We want just some light spots. And we're just gonna touch a few spots here and there so it doesn't look quite so white. And then we will go into a slightly darker color and let it blend. So you're just gonna touch a little bit where you did before and it'll kind of just bleed into that and feel more natural. And then we're going to just so lightly add some of the brown yellow. But I want to leave this mostly white here. So just in a few small spots. You see how it's not overpowering it. It still feels fairly white. Now we're going to paint our umbrella and I think I'm going to do a very bright red color. So we are on the beach and I really want it to pop. I'm actually going to go in with a smaller brush. Probably one of my rigor brushes. Start over here by the shadow. And then I'm just going to, instead of going back into paint, I'm going to go back into my water because I want it lighter on this side where the sun is hitting it. So I'm just going to add some water. So it's a little bit lighter on that side. And then when that dries, we can add a few little umbrella details. And because we do want a repeating color of our red, because it's nowhere else in our picture, I'm actually going to have this person over in here have either like a red hat or a red sun swimsuit. There's going to be somebody wearing red over here because we do want to repeat our colors. So I think the two there. Maybe somebody's sunburnt. Does anybody else get sunburned? I do. Take some blue, very dark blue. You're just gonna touch in these areas because it's too far away to really see what they're doing. So you just want them to appear. And I need the colors to be different than what I have there. Mostly dark colors on the sand or like a red. It's good. These people here, I am gonna add more red some of these just touching maybe I have a bright green over here I do want to add some other colors and then on top of those reds I'm going to add a, just a touch of a dark color because I want it to look like the top of their head and I'm gonna add a dot for the top of that umbrella you have their shadows here these are People playing, you can add maybe try and have some of their arms. I'm not going to see them too much playing in the water there. And then I'm going to get just a very little paint on my brush here and try and create just the tiniest of lines on the back side of this umbrella. There we go. And you have the shade of that umbrella. Any details you feel like you need to add? I'm going to darken up some of this sea foam here. 
I want to soften up their shadows here. I have another person coming into the water here. I'll put a bit of green. So we want that green repeating as well. Now that we're done, we can sign our painting. And you want to use fairly liquid paint so that your paint will run smoothly. I'm going to use a red this time. There we have our beach. Anybody else ready for summer? I am just touching up some of those, those people. I am so ready for summer and to get out in the sun. And now we will take off our tape. There you have a beautiful sunny beach, ready and waiting for the summer months. I really enjoy being able to do these paintings with you and I really hope that you enjoy them as well. Our question of the day, what techniques or styles would you like to learn about? And would you like to see more vlogs? Let me know in the comments below. I would really like to talk to you about what you would like to see. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell if that's what you're into so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming videos. And for more videos, don't forget to check out these up here. And for more tutorials, check out these over here. And as always, keep on painting.